There are rotto bits for making a relatively decent glue joint for drawers and make that very fast like this one here. It has a special profile and you cut that to one piece and then to another piece that is flipped 90 degrees to the first one. And once that's done, you can assemble it and the joint is finished. One problem that you can see here, you have to set up the router bit correctly or the joint won't fit properly and there will be some gaps. But how do you set that up correctly? For this router bit for example, there were no instructions that came with it and ironically the instructions that are online on the manufacturer's website are wrong. So let me show you how to set it up. The first setting is the bit height and to figure that out you need to know a measurement from here to the middle of the angled part. Either the manufacturer gives you this or you can measure it. It will be some nice value, something like five or six millimeters or a quarter inch. Something that's nice to work with. I mean, the manufacturers are not stupid. For the one I have, this turns out to be five millimeters. The bit height then is just double that measurement. So for me, 10 millimeters. The second setup is the fence distance and that depends on what you want to achieve because with this router bit you can make multiple styles of drawers. For both styles you again need one measurement of the router bit which is from the outer edge to the inner edge. And that is again a given measurement from the manufacturer. In my case it's 3.2 millimeters. The first setting and probably the most useful one is that you only have one setting on the router table and can cut both parts with that and when you assemble it you will end up with a nice and sharp corner. And that setting is actually pretty simple because it's just half of the material thickness plus half of that second measurement. That's it and it works for any material thickness. Maybe it's a bit difficult to get your head wrapped around this so I have prepared something on the computer where I can show you how the settings will affect the final joint. This model here is basically a representation of the piece of wood you just saw and I made the first cut with the exact geometry that I just showed. So five millimeters here from the middle of the angled surface to the top of the cutter, the 3.2 millimeters from the outer edge to the inner edge the 10 millimeters of bit height and 10.6 millimeters for the fence distance and this will create such a cutout. And then I've modeled a second piece with the same cut settings and as you can see it fits perfectly into it. If I choose a different fence distance than the 10.6, for example 12, then this will end with a joint like this. And of course, if it's the other way, for example, I just use nine millimeters, then it's a joint like this. How well the joint fits is not affected by the fence distance. That's only a matter of the bit height. So if I change that, for example, from 10 to nine millimeters, the result will look like this. And now there are gaps and this joint won't fit properly. If I change it in the other direction, to for example 11 millimeters then in the 3d model the joints will overlap but in real life that's not possible this will just mean that you won't be able to fully assemble the joint there will be a gap right here i can also show you what happens when i use a different material thickness for example 15 millimeters since i'm still at a fence setting for 80 millimeter stock thickness it doesn't fit properly but if i change that to the right settings again, so half of 15 is 7.5 plus 1.6, the joint fits perfectly again. This also works in the other direction. Let's try 30 millimeter stock thickness and I have to adjust the fence setting again. So 15 plus 1.6 and it fits again. It looks a bit weird and probably is not meant for material this thick, but basically it works. So let's try this in real life. My test material has a thickness of 14.7. So 14.7 divided by 2 plus 1.6. 8.95 millimeters is the fence distance.
When you make the cuts you really need to use a feather board because the pieces need to be tightly pressed against the fence or the table and if they are not that will really affect how well the joint goes together. First test piece it fits together not perfectly. And this is the case that I showed in the 3D model. The rod a bit is set too high. I measure 10.05 but I don't know how accurate this thing is. So let's slow it a bit a little bit. Now I'm at 9.9 millimeters. Let's do another test cut. Second test fit. And that is pretty much perfect. The nice thing now is that I have figured out a bit height measured with this tool. Now if it is exactly 10 millimeters or 9.9 .9 in my case, there are many tolerances, doesn't matter. But I know that this current height setting makes for a good fitting joint. I can leave it as is and use any stock thickness I want and only need to change the fence position to achieve a perfect fitting joint. And that's pretty cool. Okay, now you can achieve a good joint, but if you really make a box or drawer, you want to achieve specific dimensions, mostly outer dimensions. And how long do the stock pieces need to be to achieve exactly that? If you look at this example, this side here is exactly as long as the stock, but on this side here, you need to take these little parts here into account. And this here is just the material thickness minus the 10 millimeters from the bit height. I can now measure from here to here and then figure out how long the stock piece would be. The length is weirdly 233 millimeters. Now I subtract two times the thickness of the material, which is 18 millimeters in this case. And now I add two times the bit height, which is two times 10. So the piece should be 217 millimeters long. Let's measure that. And that is exactly how long this piece is. Okay, for another more logical example, I have some more test material that I want to turn into a box. It is 15.2 millimeters thick. And I want the box to be 220 millimeters on this side and 180 millimeter on this side. For one side, I can directly use the stock length and I want the 220 millimeters to be that, so I named that with a one. And the 180 millimeters, I now have to calculate. Just like before, I take the 180, subtract two times the thickness of 15.2, and then add two times the bit height setting, which is 10 millimeters. So that's the stock length for this short side. 169.6 millimeters. Now I just need to cut the stock material to this dimension. With the stock at the right length, I next need to make the right cut to the right piece. The one that I directly use the length is the one that's laying on the router table and the other one is against the fence. Now I can assemble the box. And this side of course still has the 220 millimeters and right here I'm at 180. Now let's glue it together. For clamping I should only need two clamps to clamp this properly. Maybe a third one to bring it into square, but that's not necessary in this case. Um, yes, looks like I glued it to the table. For good. 
you take a close look, the joint is fully closed, flush at the end, pretty cool. All right, that first use of the router bit worked out great. And where I really see the potential of this is when you make many drawers at once, because then you only have to take bigger sheets of plywood, cut that profile along the whole edge of the bigger sheet, cut it into strips, and then all the draw blanks are ready for gluing. And that then really saves time for cutting all the joinery. And I will definitely try it out when I'm building my next workbench with a lot of drawers in it. Now let's take a look into the second use of that router bit. In the first method, you build a box and then to make it into a nice drawer, you would add another piece as the drawer front. But you can also make a drawer and the front is part of the box itself and the sides are then a little bit inset. To achieve that, you need two fan settings. I randomly chose 20 millimeters from the edge to the fence for the first cut. For the second setting, the lower edge of the bit needs to be flush with the fence. And that is pretty easy to set up. The amount my example overhangs is not very much. And to be exact, it's exactly the first setting of the router bit, the 20 millimeters, minus the thickness of this stock. This is 18.4, so the overhang should be about 1.6 millimeters. And that's exactly what it is. Now when you really make such a drawer, you don't randomly choose the first fence setting. You want to know it because usually you know the size of the box and the size of the front. And then need to calculate how to set the first fence setting. And that again is pretty simple. So you take the size of the front, subtract the size of the box, divide that by two, and then add the thickness of the stock. To confirm that with my little example, I measured it and the size of my front panel is 178 minus the size of my box, which I measured with 175. This I divide by two and then I add the thickness of the stock to that, which in my case, I guess was 18.5. And then I get exactly the 20 millimeters I randomly chose at the beginning. And when I now really wanted to make a drawer with these dimensions, that's the setting for the router fence for the first cut. Um, well, to complete the drawer, I need the back. So I actually also need a third setting. The size of that back piece is exactly that measurement. That's how long the stock needs to be. The fence setting for that third cut is the one from the first one, the 20 millimeters minus the overlap, which in my case was 1.6 millimeters. So 18.4 for the third setting. And now I can assemble it to a complete drawer. Well, a really small one. Calculating the length of it is actually the same as with the first one. It can be a little different if the front and the back piece are different thicknesses. Then when you know the full length of the drawer, the length of the side piece is this measurement minus this thickness minus this thickness plus two times the 10 millimeters. And then that's the length of one side piece. Now I can also glue that and I figured that I only need to apply glue to the front and back piece and only the surfaces that the router bit cut. So yeah, basically all of the surfaces. And then I can spread the glue to the other piece by just smearing it around like so. And that gets all the mating surfaces pretty nicely covered with glue. Before I'm trying to break them, I would say that these joints are perfectly adequate for the purpose of being a drawer, because I don't see that a drawer really experiences that big forces. But let's see how hard it is to break that. Now clamp to my workbench, I'm trying to break it with a hammer.
all joints broke, but it's not really the joint that fails, but the wood, the plywood layers just get ripped apart. I don't think that the solid wood will perform a lot better. As you can see, this is the spot where the plywood got ripped apart and this would be the same spot on the solid wood. And that's also where I think it's going to break because there's no solid wood fiber that supports this part directly. And for this one I'm using a clamp to break it a little slower. And as you can see, where it got ripped apart is exactly the same spot as before. I guess it's obvious that this is not the strongest corner joint and also only as strong as the wood is. So the optimal wood choice would be hardwood, but that on the other hand is very expensive again. It will never be as strong as a nicely made box joint drawer. So a heavily used drawer that also holds heavy stuff, I will always use box joints, but for another general purpose drawer that you use every once in a while, I still think this is perfectly adequate. And also compared to box joints, it's probably 10 times quicker to produce. And especially when you make multiple drawers. I guess it's obvious that this is not the strongest corner joint and also only as strong as the wood is. So the optimal model, yeah. And that then really saves time for cutting the joinery and I will definitely try it out for building my next workbench where I have mini plors, plors? Drawers planned. Huh.